Kennedy was trying to keep us out of war. I was trying to help him keep us out of war. And General Curtis LeMay, whom I served under, as a matter of fact, in World War II, was saying, let's go in, let's totally destroy Cuba. In a sense, we'd won. We got the missiles out without war. My deputy and I brought the five chiefs over. We sat down with Kennedy. And he said, gentlemen, we won. I don't want you to ever say it, but you know we won. I know we won. And LeMay said, one hell. We lost. We should go in and wipe them out today. <laughs> LeMay believed that ultimately we're going to confront these people in a conflict with nuclear weapons, and by God, we better do it when we have greater superiority than we will have in the future. I wrote one report analyzing the efficiency of the B-29 operations. The B-29 could get above the fighter aircraft and above the air defense, so the loss rate would be much less. The problem was, the accuracy was also much less. Now, I don't want to suggest that it was my report that led to, I'll call it the firebombing. It isn't that I'm trying to absolve myself of blame for the firebombing. I don't want to suggest that it was I that put in LeMay's mind that his operations were totally inefficient and had to be drastically changed. But anyhow, that's what he did. He took the B-29s down to 5,000 feet, and he decided to bomb with firebombs. I participated in the interrogation of the B-29 bomber crews that came back that night. A room full of crewmen and, and, and intelligence uh, interrogators, a captain got up, young captain, and said, God damn it, I'd like to know who this son of a bitch was that took this magnificent airplane designed to bomb from 23,000 feet, and he took it down to 5,000 feet, and I lost my wingman. He was shot and killed. LeMay spoke in monosyllables. I never heard him say more than uh, two words in sequence. It was basically, yes, no, yep. That's all the hell with it. That was all he said. And LeMay was totally intolerant of criticism. He never engaged in discussion with anybody. He stood up. Why are we here? Why are we here? You lost your wingman. It hurts me as much as it does you. I sent him there. And I've been there. I know what it is. But you lost one wingman, and we destroyed Tokyo. One of the commanders was Curtis LeMay, colonel in command of a B-24 group. He was the finest combat commander of any service I came across in the war. But he was extraordinarily belligerent. Many thought brutal. He got the report. He issued an order. He said, I will be in the lead plane on every mission. Any plane that takes off will go over the target, or the crew will be court-martialed. The abort rate dropped overnight. Now, that's the kind of a commander he was. LeMay was focused on only one thing target destruction. Most Air Force generals could tell you how many planes they had, how many tons of bombs they dropped, or whatever the hell it was. But he was the only person that I knew in the senior command of the Air Force who focused solely on the loss of his crews per unit of target destruction. I was on the island of Guam in his command in March of 1945. In that single night, 
We burned to death 100,000 Japanese civilians in Tokyo, men, women, and children. In order to win a war, should you kill 100,000 people in one night by firebombing or any other way? LeMay's answer would be clearly yes. McNamara, do you mean to say that instead of killing 100,000, burning to death 100,000 Japanese civilians in that one night, we should have burned to death a lesser number or none, and then had our soldiers cross the beaches in Tokyo and been slaughtered in the tens of thousands? Is that what you're proposing? Is that moral? Is that wise? Why was it necessary to drop the nuclear bomb if LeMay was burning up Japan? And he went on from, from Tokyo to firebomb other cities. 58% of Yokohama, Yokohama is roughly the size of Cleveland. 58% of Cleveland destroyed. Tokyo is roughly the size of New York. 51% of New York destroyed. 99% of the equivalent of Chattanooga, which was Toyama. 40% of the equivalent of Los Angeles, which was Nagoya. This was all done before the dropping of the nuclear bomb. LeMay said, if we'd lost the war, we'd all have been prosecuted as war criminals. And I think he's right. He, and I'd say I, were behaving as war criminals. LeMay recognized that what he was doing would be thought immoral if his side had lost. But what makes it immoral if you lose and not immoral if you win?